super excited because our malic dehydrogenase enzyme is still super duper active after it was frozen and diluted 150 fold. Woo! Such a relief. So I've talked about kind of how there are multiple obstacles that you have to go through when purifying a protein, especially when you're purifying an enzyme. One is will it express, which you can test by basically doing an SDS page pre and post induction. Pass that test. Second is, well, is it soluble? And that's when you break open the cells, you spit them down, you see is it in the soluble stuff or is it in the membrane gunk and it's probably in an inclusion body, basically these aggregates. That would be a pain. So we passed that test. Third, can you actually purify it? And so, yes, we purified it. And well, first of all, like, can you actually just like do chromatography on it. So we did chromatography on it. We got a bunch of protein. Then the test was, okay, well, we want to dialyze it to remove the salt. Can it survive the night? It survived the night. Didn't crash out. We came in and it was still nice and clear in its pouch. Not any precipitate. All good. Then the question is, okay, well, can you actually freeze thaw it? And so, well, we could, you could freeze it. And so we froze it and we did it with um, like 10% glycerol. And then we're kind of, we in the little tiny aliquot. So we'd only have to freeze thaw them once, but we'd still have to freeze thaw them. We'd still have to freeze thaw them. Would it survive? Would it survive that? And well, first of all, like, what do I mean by would it survive? Well, would it precipitate out and would it still be active? So I forgot to mention a minute ago that one of the tests when you're purifying an enzyme, is it actually active? Can it do what it's supposed to do? In the case of malic dehydrogenase, we want to see, can it interconvert malate and oxaloacetate? Can it take in this case, take oxaloacetate, take NADH, convert the um, oxaloacetate to malate, so reduce the malate, oxidizing the NADH, and well, then you get this reaction. Yes, I know it's the opposite way is if you go in your TCA, but when you're in your TCA, basically the only reason why it's going in that direction of the malate to oxaloacetate isn't because it's more thermodynamically favorable, just like in general in vitro and stuff. No, it's because you're keeping the oxaloacetate concentration really, really low, pulling things forward. Thanks, Le Chatelier. But anyway, that's why you go that way in the in the citric acid cycle. But when you do this reaction in vitro, you actually go the other direction. Um, it's much more favorable typically to go from oxaloacetate to malate. Um, and so what we can do is measure the disappearance of the NADH as that process happens. And why am I talking about measuring the NADH? Well, because that's the thing that you can easily measure. By measuring the absorbance at the nanometer, 340 nanometer wavelength, that's where NADH absorbs. When it gets converted to NAD+, which is what happens when it gets used to um, reduce the oxaloacetate to malate, then what happens is that NADH signal goes because you're converting it to NAD+, which is an absorbing at 340. And so you're able to measure the absorbance over time in order to get to that, um, the, like, the rate at which the reaction is happening. And so we did that assay. We saw that, yes, we got activity. And this was before, purification, before the freezing and all that. So we were still really excited. We're like, yeah, yeah, we got activity. Um, and then the question is, okay, well, can it actually, is it still active after we thaw it? And what? It still is. And so we actually had to uh, dilute it 150 fold in order to actually get it to be like good measurable levels. And what do I mean by good measurable levels? Basically when you're doing a um, like your time course over time, what you want to do is you're going to measure the slope. You're going to measure the change in absorbance over time and calculate the slope. Now, in order to calculate the slope, you need to actually have a nice linear region because you want to calculate the slope of the linear region, not the region where it kind of like plateaus because it starts running out of stuff. It uses all the NADH up. So what you want to do is find that linear range. And so that's why we had to do this like scouting out to try to find what concentration would be good. Too high of a concentration and boop, you're your enzyme is basically just using it up all the way. And by the time you actually press mix it, it's just gone. The NADH is gone. No usable data. Not enough enzyme and eh, you don't have enough of really have much of a curve. It's more just like noise. And you want to find that sweet spot where you've got that nice linear range you could work with over like 45 seconds or so. And so we were diluting the enzyme and we diluted it and it was still going. Pew. We diluted it again. It was still going. Pew. We diluted it. 
So ultimately we ended up diluting it 150 fold, which is awesome because that means that we, since we only need 10 microliters per reaction, we have like 150, micro, 150 reactions worth in 10 microliters of the undiluted. And we have 15 milliliters of the undiluted. Yes, 15 milliliters in tiny little 30 microliter aliquots. And each 30 microliter aliquot is enough for 30 times 150 assays and or three times 150 assays so that's like 450 assays which is a ton a ton a ton and that's just one tube and we have a whole box of tubes okay so that was a really exciting really exciting and so next up is kind of like characterizing it kinetically so we basically we're looking at bacillus defenses malic dehydrogenase and like we don't have any sort of like things like the constants and stuff aren't known, so we get to figure them out, which is really, really cool. And so we're thinking we're gonna they're going to be similar to Bacillus subtilis. And so we're actually going to purify Bacillus subtilis later this week and compare them. So that should be really fun. But basically, in order to figure out, like, kinetic constants, things like your KM and your Vmax and your KCAD and all that good stuff, what you have to do is instead of doing one concentration, like, over time, you have to do different concentrations um and then get the initial rate at those different concentrations but you need to know what concentration of enzyme to use in order to get those nice linear rates so now we know what concentration of enzyme we want to use now we get to do the different concentrations of nadh and the different concentrations of oxaloacetate um and that will give us allow us to find those kinetic constants that we can use um and then later we can compare them and we can make mutations and compare things we can do all sorts of fun stuff really really cool how you can do all of this with just like this simple assay that is like i mean this is probably one of the cheapest assays i've ever done in my life when you're measuring just like absorbance you don't even have to add any fluorophores or something nadh is awesome man